like I got totally punished today. Um, but you know, like I, it was it was a rookie mistake on my behalf by telling my personal trainer, "Hey, you know what? I'm feeling a bit shit uh, from all these surgeries." And he went, "Oh yeah, okay. Then why don't I just thrash you until <laughs> you die of death?" And uh, but it was uh, it's the closest I've come to a rocky montage. <laughs> Except that Rocky didn't collapse and into the fetal position and start vomiting all over himself at the end of the montage. I don't remember Rocky bursting into tears <laughs> while trying to chase the chicken. Not a euphemism, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just wrapped to be on lounges. That's uh, actually you, you've got the position right. I might even do that as well. I might not get back up. This I'll, I might spend the rest of my life just podcasting from a. A prone position. <laughs> a prostrate position. Yeah. Um, so, we, we've got to get back to your story that we... Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey. We're, hey. we're right into yeah, this. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, so, we have to uh, get to your story that we were going to tell a few podcasts ago. Oh, but yeah. It turned out my kidney stone story. Well, well, I haven't actually seen you since then. We've had a few messages, mm. but um, like, are you okay? What's happening? Did you piss the shards out? Oh, yeah, yeah. So They came out? <laughs> yeah, but I have to go in again. Oh, what? I know. This is a never-ending story with Why? no love more, dragon. More stones? So, the first time I went in uh, and they removed that stone, I thought they cleared out that kidney, but yeah. they didn't. They just they spent all that time getting that stone out. So, when I went in the second time, they cleaned up one kidney, and then I have to go back in to clean up the other kidney. Right. Oh, my Lord. So, the last surgery was where they shattered it with sound waves? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And did you pass the shards? Yeah, I did, but I don't oh. want to really talk about it okay. because it wasn't... No, 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 no. no it's I wish the, it's, everyone listening to this could see your face yeah, right now. No, like, it's, oh, it's, no, 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 no but no. it's the opposite because it was like, I'm reluctant to say this out loud, it, it was okay. Oh, okay. What's wrong with that? Well, because I have to do it again and I might not be so lucky. Oh, so, so I, you, do, you don't want to jinx yourself? I, yeah, and I don't even really believe in jinxing or karma or any of that Isn't bullshit. it weird though? Because I'm the same as you. Like I have no... I mean, i got some spiritual belief maybe, but it's of my own creation. Yeah. You know, and if there was a gun to my head, I don't really believe it. It's just, you know, nice stories I tell myself so I can sleep at night. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like if you were in a position where you had to pray to someone, you'd be like, ah, uh, <laughs> David Bowie, are you there? Can you help me, David? Just as valid, just as valid. Right. Um, at least, hey, at least I've actually met him as opposed to that other dude that we hear all these stories about. All those other dudes. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm the same. Like uh, superstition, uh, I get very superstitious about jinxing myself yeah even though the rational part of me knows you know what what an egomaniacal belief the, you know that one thing that you do is going to make the universe conspire oh. against you like come on man you know what i think mine is uh. i don't want to say to you hey pretty good <laughs> and then uh the next one's really painful and then someone who listens to the podcast goes, you said it was a n- not that bad yeah, <laughs> go, oh, oh, right, oh, yeah okay right so i don't like to set myself up yeah sure for sure someone to be able to have a crack do you believe in karma Nah. See, I believe in karma, but only self-imposed karma. Oh, oh, yeah, no, no. But you, so, where maybe subconsciously you send yourself yeah, down a path yeah, yeah, where you yeah. get the retribution that you yeah, somewhere yeah. in your head think you deserve. Well, yeah, I've got, I've got a very kind of strict moral code uh, of just what I consider to be right and wrong. Yeah, and so I know that if I go against that, and it's just stupid things like you know. Just as an example, like littering is one of those things. Right. Like even if it's like the price tag off a DVD. Yep. Like I can't just like peel it off and flick it on the ground. Yep. Because I'm convinced that Mother Mother Earth <laughs> will get so furious at right. me yep. that somewhere down the line. And it's not that I actually think that there's an external force conspiring against me. I know that I've gone against my own code and so my brain will subconsciously fuck me up somewhere down the line to even right. the, even the score. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't believe we're living on Ego, the living planet from Marvel no, Comics. No, and he's no. like, hey, <laughs> Elwood, <laughs> get that out of my eye. No, 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 it's totally, it's totally <laughs> me. Which is mm. why I think, you know, there's people that like, oh, karma doesn't exist because, you know, fucking half the Nazis moved to Argentina and never answered for their crimes. Yeah, right. And it's like, well, yeah, no, karma doesn't exist for them because they're morally bankrupt and have no scruples about what they did so oh. there's no part of them that's fucking oh, themselves Jesus, up Jesus Ben be careful we'll have the Nazis getting in touch with us saying oh how dare you have a go at us where do you get off mate just doing our best mate 
How do you feel? Oh, yeah, I feel pretty good until you started writing to me thinking that you had any rights. <laughs> how, how interesting was that watching that guy get punched in the head, uh, uh, Richard... Uh, that uh, alt-right guy. Yeah, Richard Spencer. Yeah, what do you think? What do you what do you make of that? Yeah, I'm, I was bad? kind of yeah, I was kind of fine with it. Like, <laughs> you know, like I, I I know violence is <laughs> like intellectually, I know that we should aspire for something greater. Yeah, but you know, I kind of really enjoyed watching him get cracked a couple yeah. of times. And you know, what well, anyone can say, oh yeah, but you know, but yeah, you know, I agree with all of that. I agree yeah. with all of that idea that we should be aspiring for mm. more. But, you know, he said some pretty terrible things and he got punched in the head. And, I don't know, it was great. Yeah, it's, sati- it's satisfying <laughs> on a personal level, but, like, on a, on, a, on a widespread kind of moving forward as a movement level, it's maybe not the best move. But, yeah, you can't deny that scene. Well, yeah, I like guess. That. But, you know, there's lots of people getting shot that are innocent all the time. And, you know, mm-hmm. us not punching Nazis in the head hasn't helped that. So, you know, it's just a little crack here and there. <laughs> Justin Hamilton says, punch a Nazi. Yeah, punch a Nazi. <laughs> Hamo says... <laughs> Tune in tomorrow when I have another crack at some cunt. <laughs> but I've um in the in the last year and a bit I've changed my Twitter feed quite heavily so I because I realised I was in an echo chamber. Yeah. I know that's becoming an in term. And I d- when I started changing who I was following, uh, I, I I hadn't really heard the term echo chamber yeah, before. Sure, sure. But I started changing things, you know, probably in the first quarter of last year because I felt like I wasn't getting enough of the other side of things. Sure, and you have enough uh, poison and bile in your life. Ah, it's really hard being across what they're thinking. Mm. It's really depressing. Mm, yeah. That, um, that, and, and also, it, it really makes you, like, there's some people that I just have really enjoyed had, having a dig at, like Piers Morgan, like, you know, anytime <laughs> he writes something, just having a crack at him, it's just great. <laughs> like, and I, and because I don't read any responses, it's like, ah, oh, well, I'm, I'm living in my own echo chamber of nice one, Hamo. But, <laughs> But I got him. Got him. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard what any of his uh, followers have said. But, uh, you know, there was, um, you know, that, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Tommy Lahern, you know, the uh. young uh, right-wing pundit who is, um, would be aesthetically considered pretty. It, it, like, she was on uh, The Daily Show. Oh, not my yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Trevor Noah had an extended yeah. interview with her. Right, right, right. I'm yes, not, yes, I'm yes. not. She's not my kind of She's pretty. She's like young Ann Coulter. Yeah, but, but I would be a liar to say if she wasn't, if that makes sense. Like, Wait, she, well, you'd be a liar to say if she wasn't what? She's not my kind of pretty, but I oh, can understand. Oh, but she's, yeah, objectively, she's, aesthetically right. attractive. Yeah. Yes, okay. And, um, uh, and she was she put up a little thing about uh, how horrible political correctness is. And uh, I had Limo on the phone, and, I, and I'd said to him... <laughs> I said, I just wanted to write back to her, like, you know, retweet that and write back to her saying, couldn't agree more. Now, why don't you show us your tits? And <laughs> you know what? Like, th- this might hold me back as a comedian or a social comment- commentator or something, yeah. but it was just part of me that if my followers who didn't, you know, read it not properly or weren't thinking about who I am yeah, saying yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to offend anyone that would think that I was genuinely saying that do you know what i mean yeah I know, yeah yeah no i i i know what you mean like the uh, like the that's the position we're all in at the moment unfortunately yeah so it like i feel more comfortable doing it on stage because on stage i can i feel like i can control the narrative a little bit more and like tone, even, yeah. yeah even in this podcast i can say that's that would have been me puncturing the fact that well you know you you're saying you don't like political correctness but political correctness helped people not say these things yeah, to absolutely. you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the comedy is to me go, yeah, too right. And by the way, show us your tits, which <laughs> would have been... But, you know, someone misreads it because they can't, you know, they... Until you can put intonation in a in a in a written word, totally, totally. You know, it's well, that, a, it's I mean, a tough isn't one. that the whole reason emojis became such a big thing? I think so. Yeah, the uh, uh, the the, com- the comic Dan Rath has a great line about that. You know, that every every text might Rathy's mess- here. Rathy. isn't he great? <laughs> <laughs> he makes me laugh a lot. That kid. Uh, but his his great line about um, every text message is hostile unless there's an emoji it's, uh, attached. <laughs> yeah, <to> no, <laughs> so true, right? I bo- I wouldn't even know which emoji to use. You know, I know I. would Kind of put, you know, the big sp- I, I put the, shit. the face that's got the tongue out and the eye closed, which to me would be like, how funny am I being? But I could find out that means go and punch a Nazi in the face. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tend to avoid the whole thing. Although I have been finding myself using emojis 
when I text. I think it's just by osmosis. And yeah, I Because it's true, you know, like so many people, you'll send a message and it's just a basic, like, meet you here this time. Mm. Oh, are you angry at me? What? what? How, did, how did we get to this? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, when uh, there was... Th- and this actually made me really... Like, you know what? I am pretty comfortable with the way things progress and not thinking, oh, no, this is the end of the world. But when people started getting upset about full stops, do you remember that? No. Full stops in a text message I was seen as being really aggressive. Right. Well, I, 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 maybe I subconsciously picked up on this because I end all my text messages with dot, dot. Right. But then I've had people go, oh, it's all open-ended now. <laughs> like, oh, you can't win. Sake. But it's like, but you know. You're just trailing off. Oh, are you having a go at me? What makes you say that? You finish it with a full stop. And it's like, nah, I was just finishing the sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what we have done for uh, hundreds of years. Yeah. You idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's, a strange, it's a strange setup we're all yeah. in now. I use a lot of exclamation marks, especially for when I'm excited. And I hope that comes across that I'm excited. No <laughs> worries. <laughs> You're some shouting maniac. <laughs> yeah, I am. But uh, that, to, that to me is, that's that represents to me, like if we were hanging out, if I made this comment, I would look up at the ceiling and point. So I'm like, uh, I can't wait either. You know, that's what it means to me. Anyway, we needed an emotion. Like George Burns in Oh God. Remember the DVD, the VHS cover yeah, for that? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I, uh, I need someone to create an emoji of me looking up at the ceiling with my finger pointed up, and that means excited. Well, isn't there a whole thing now? Because my mum started, my mum still doesn't know that my shitty little burner phone doesn't uh, get emojis. Oh, right. Um, but she's got some program where. Hang on, what's your mum got? Uh, like the iPhone fucking f- oh, so 50, 50, 50, 500, whatever. So, so, you, the, so your the mum's newest thing. Yeah, your mum's ahead of the curve, and meanwhile, you're on the street at <laughs> of the wire making deals. It's <laughs> a fucking choice, man. No, I know. It's a conscious <laughs> choice. But, you know, she's of that generation where it's like, she doesn't understand, like, GIFs and emojis and right. all these things have been around for a real long time. But, yeah. you know, she'll discover it yesterday afternoon and suddenly it's like look at this thing have you seen these things before but still not understanding that my phone doesn't oh, yeah, receive doesn't look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just so get two little squares whenever she tries to send right, an emoji right. but she's got some program where it is her I don't know what it is oh I, I think Rove has that it's like you well. design your own face and then all the emojis are in your uh, well there goes my weekend face I'm just gonna you are gonna do I'm that I'm just gonna design you have a very you, your uh, face would lend itself well to emojis it's round with glasses well, it's an iconic look yeah with a with a bung eye do you have a bung eye? Oh, it's my oh, uv- uv- uvitis. Right, sure, yeah, sure, sure, sure. so I could have uvitis hamo. <laughs> I could have kidney stone hamo. Those those eyes are <laughs> tightly clenched. Well, we just we were just talking about that before the uh, <laughs> before we started recording. Just the different signs of how you know you're officially sliding down into middle age. And uh, oh, I'm right in it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah. your body's uh, your body's definitely telling you that. Well, I said to Will, and uh, I'm reluctant anyway. I, I, he took it the way it was meant, and I think you'll take it the way it was meant. But I reckon some people think, "Fuck, that's some dark shit." Yeah. But I am enjoying the kidney stone era and the uveitis era and the whatever else is falling apart with me era, because what it means is that when I go into the doctor, they just tell me something that is, you know, it's annoying and it's a bit painful, but you're going to be okay. Because one day I'm going to go in and they're going to say, you have three minutes to live. Yeah. And I'll go, oh, remember the good old days when I just had a bung eye? That's so, that man, that is so fucking funny. That's exactly the reaction I had with all my butt problems. Yeah. Where I was just like, well, you know, it's training ground for when shit really hits the fan. Yep. You know? Let's just really enjoy this (laughs) because this, this stuff you get better from. And there's going to be a period when it's not. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about the time I... You know, do you know Peter Hellier very well? No, I've, oh, you know, I've never even met him. He's a fucking great guy. Mm. And he, do, he does, uh, and he's, he's full of the good life as well. Like he doesn't, he barely has a shadow in him. That's, do you know what I mean? Is like, that true? Yeah, he's, he's just a cracking bloke, just looks at things in a Aren't you kind really of suspicious of people that don't have like the shadow in them? Oh, you know, he, like, he can make jokes and that kind of thing. But I just mean uh, as an approach to everyday life. Oh, that's lovely. He's, yeah, it, it, and it's really intoxicating to be around. He's, he's a real can-do kind of guy. Uh-huh. And I remember uh, I was hanging out with Pete and uh, Gleason one night. And, <laughs> and Gleason is a little bit more like us, you oh. know. And so Gleason said, oh, what are your plans? And I, I just joked. I said, um, 
oh, you know, I'll probably kick around for a few years and then eventually when my mum passes, I'll kill myself because what's the point? Oh, do you mean for tonight? <laughs> oh, I'm just going to go to a gig. <laughs> anyway, Gleason's laughed so hard and I've never mentioned this to Pete. <coughs> I lo- Tom and I looked at Pete and Pete just had a really sad look on his face as if to say, how would you even think of something like that? <laughs> <laughs> and I felt so bad I've never made jokes like that. I try not to make jokes like that around Pete anymore because he is just a good guy, you know? <laughs> He's just a really good guy that would never think of things like that and I, I don't like to upset him. See, I'm the opposite. I'm like, how, how does your brain not go to those places? Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? It's that, that, that whole catastrophizing thing. Yeah. Planning for, planning for an apocalyptic future. Mate, hey, hang out with Pete. He'll, he'll bring you back from the edge. Like, he's, <laughs> he's, he's good people, you know. Limo's a little bit like that as well. Limo's got that kind of, you know, positive outlook on life that can pull yeah. you back. And, you know, even if you t- say something bad to Limo, Limo would be like, ah, it's fucked. Anyway, the Hawks are playing and, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, he'll get yeah. you back on track kind of thing. And I, I admire it. It's, it's, it. They're not naive and they're not... Uh, they're not deliberately turning their head away from it, mm. but it is just it's you know just their outlook, and they are can-do guys. I'm getting I'm getting better as I get older with just kind of it is what it is, mm. just that fo- that philosophy of yeah. you know it is what it is, and it really can't be any other way. And yep. you know I used to kind of wallow in these tailspins of why it's not fair. <laughs> But um, I think, uh, you know, I think all those medical issues I had a couple of years ago was a real kind of uh, test of that philosophy. Right. Because there was so much pain and so much discomfort yeah. and really no end in sight. You know, basically every report I was getting from doctors was like, well, this could just be you for the rest of the time that you're here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like... You know, and you can either, you know, get bitter about that and, and hate what your body's doing to itself and all this stuff, or you can just kind of surrender to it and go, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. And there are, you know, there were benefits that came of it. It completely changed my lifestyle. It completely yep. changed my diet. Yeah. You know, I took a lot better care. of. So, yeah, there was a part of me that was all fucked up and faulty and broken, but yeah. it kind of forced the rest of me to get my act together. And I saw it as a as like a warning shot of like hey dude like the life you're living is fucked yeah and you're gonna you know yeah you you're in this much pain now but if you don't deal with this now 10 yeah. years from now it's going to be catastrophic yeah and you can turn these things into positives you know like uh, people will say you can turn it into a positive and at the time you're thinking jesus i just want to be able to sit down without bursting into tears but <laughs> it's uh but you can and uh, i think you can learn from those things but um yeah being being around being around people who are naturally positive uh, and, you know, not not in that uh, kumbaya kind of way. But everything's great all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not negative about anything. Yeah. I'm not negative about anything. Yeah. Genocide, you're not negative about genocide. You know, they, well, they get frustrated. They hate those things. They'll, but, you know, like Limo, you know, you see him constantly putting his name to things to, yeah. you know, so, it, but they just bring a good energy. In yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I try to siphon that shit. To get me back from the edge. That's what I am. I'm a parasite. Come here, Lemo. Give me a little bit of that, hell yeah. <laughs> how, how are you feeling about uh, the current state of the world? Uh, like, are you feeling more hopeful or more in the kind of pits of despair? Hmm. Well, I had a really good chat with Tom Gleason uh, on, on the last podcast mm. uh, when I was in uh, Perth with him. Mm. And uh, he, he has, you know, Tom's a, a little bit darker and he was kind of talking about how he just... He just thinks this is a period we're going to have to get through. And, yeah. you know, he doesn't even think that we'll see Trump for four years. Like, we'll get we'll get President Pence. Don't you think Pence would become... Because there is that... I can't remember what it is. There's some kind of amendment where if the vice president and, a, and a, you know, 51% of the Republican Congress agree that the current president is unfit to serve, mm. he can be impeached. Because impeachment... The process of impeachment takes months, mm. so that's probably not the way to do it because mm. he could do a lot of damage in that time. But there's some kind of clause where they can impeach him overnight, yeah, and the vice president becomes the president. As hated as Pence is, and, and as much of a psychopath as that guy is mm. with all of his policies and everything, he would literally be not only an American hero but a planetary wide hero yeah. if he did that. Well, the Republicans could probably guarantee they'd win the next election as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess you want to get that Bannon guy out. That's the w- Steve Bannon. That's the one who seems like Steve Bannon really f- 
from you know the the articles that you read and the, you, you hear about the stuff he's been talking about for years it feels like if he could start a world war he would be mission accomplished yeah yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. And that bothers me. Which is why I think a lot of the media now are making a big... Because, you know, there's that whole thing of Trump gets all of his <coughs> information from watching television. Yeah. And I think that's... Like, if you lot of, watch a lot of the rhetoric on the talk shows and on CNN and all this stuff, they're really going down the uh, line of telling the story of Trump is not in charge of anything. It's Bannon pulling the strings. And I really yeah. think a lot of that is to get under Trump's skin yeah. so that he fires Bannon and go like, oh, he's not in charge. I'm in charge. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the, the, the other interesting thing was suddenly this call, like, suddenly SNL seems to have become quite relevant yeah. again. And, you know, the Melissa McCarthy great. impersonation. So funny. Which was <laughs> so great. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, lots of uh, pundits are suddenly going, you know what? get a woman mm. to do Trump because that's going to kill him. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, imagine Kristen Wiig doing yeah, Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, Rosie O'Donnell's already put a oh, hand she? up to be um, oh, Steve Bannon. Oh, great, yeah, great, yeah. great. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh, man, that is hilarious. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, satire has always had a great, um, a great way of kind of humiliating people, but I think with him it's it's... It's never been a more potent force. Rosie O'Donnell, not just a woman, you're helping making her relevant again. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. But she's, been, um, she's been out of the limelight for a while, hasn't she? She does radio, I think, but not, yeah. uh, but not that profile that she used to have. Oh, totally. And it'd be just such great revenge yeah. against Trump for everything that he said oh, about yeah. her. And has it? I'm interested to know, uh, has the current mood affected uh, your entertainment viewing as well? And, and this is going to sound really silly, but I I found the general mood has affected me to the extent that I, on Netflix I tried to watch that uh, uh, Lemony, uh, Lemony, Lemony Snicket because Snicket, yeah. uh, I'd heard some good stuff about it and I'd, I'd never seen the movie, I've never read the books and I yeah. thought I'll just watch the... And like I, I, I thought it was really well done, but... I don't know, there was something about it 20 minutes in talking about these kids and how terrible their lives are and everything that I just kind of got really <laughs> depressed and got really stuck in my head yeah. of oh, how shit is the world and had to had to turn it off. I don't think... And, and I had to go back to old episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I don't <laughs> think is... I don't think is the best written comedy or even the best acted comedy, but the fact that all the characters really dig each other like they really like each other yeah. and really back each other and all the women in it are kick ass women and even the goofy guy does good things and they learn lessons. Man, I it was like, Oh, I need to I need to watch some Brooklyn Nine Nine so I feel better about shit. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And uh and we'll we'll get to it, but all that jazz kind of like I loved it and Yeah, was, it's amazing. Uh, it was but there were there were times where I was like, Whew, this is a lot to take in. You know, in light of the current, in light of you know you, how you just feel about things. And I think everything's coming through that filter at the moment, and, yeah. I, th and I really think it's unavoidable. I yeah. mean, you know, even the kind of movie review or you know pop culture podcasts I listen to, yeah, you know, they can talk about what they're talking about for twenty minutes or so, but then it always rounds back to the state of the world. Because I mean, it's like yeah. really, I mean, th all this stuff has been trivial always, but it seems even more ridiculous now that you could just spend all your time talking about. Game of Thrones and fucking this and that without kind of addressing what the fuck. It just, it's terrifying, man. Like, my, I, I've really got to have some discipline with my brain to not go down the paths of really extreme horror right. with all of this. You know, my big thing at the moment is, you know, <laughs> all it's going to take is a firecracker going off in Times Square for oh. him to just, you know, I mean, how is that not going to kick something ex extremely fucking terrible oh, off? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then what? Oh, uh, now that we're in a state of war, uh, I am suspending all free elections. You know, like, uh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, what's. But, uh, well, he's, you know, it doesn't seem that crazy to suggest. It doesn't seem that. crazy at all. You know, and you look, I was reading an article about what will happen with Brexit mm. and, you know, the and what it was doing was breaking down all the uh, access to, you know, the rest of the world that England and Wales won't have and what that will mean financially and how that will have a knock-on effect. And it's like, oh, my Lord, that is... Oh, dear. 
that is like that's horrific and then you can't like i know i know it's been a almost borderline cliche for everyone to get out their copies of 1984 but it's like i i I, my big fear is the because I have no faith in our government, any of them, no. <laughs> any of the governments we could have as well. No. Uh, that Trump will say, "I want you to get your navy and patrol that area around China," yeah. and our government will say, "Yeah, okay, okay. Yep, let's do it." Will you take a? Will you take those thirteen people that we can't house in our country? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. If you take those thirteen people, do it. Oh, yeah, it's great. Work. Yeah, sure, our sure, bombs sure. are really good, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you really want to side with the dying empire and not the uh, empire that's on the fucking rise, that's for sure. I also don't want to side with the bad guys. You know, I would hate to get, in you know, in 10 years' time, be sitting here, if we were lucky enough to be sitting here and go, can you believe we were on Darth Vader's side? This is bullshit. <laughs> Actually, that would be, I would like to see, uh, like, a, you know what, a Rosencrantz and Gilderstone, I'm sure they've already done it, but, uh, yeah. you know, you know the stormtrooper that hit his head? Yeah. Maybe he's just a really cool bloke and his mate, and they just, you know, they, they just didn't have any money, they signed up, oh, you get to see the universe, yeah. you know? And then it's like, oh, how cool did, like, they'd only ever seen photos of Darth Vader. How cool does he look? Do you know he chokes people? Oh, no, nah, he wouldn't do that. Look at him. He's <laughs> like, then they find out all this information. Oh, this is a disaster as they're getting yeah. punched in the nuts by an Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> Some, so if this has already happened, can someone let us know? It feels like something that should have happened. <laughs> it sounds like a Kevin Smith monologue. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> uh, ends with me telling John Peters to go fuck himself. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it just, I don't know, man, it's so, and you know, like, now that all this Orwellian kind of doublespeak is happening, you know, every, everything, of everything he's done that's terrifying, the, the lying about the crowd size is oh. truly horrifying, because if he's lying about that, what happens when, not if, when there is another terrorist attack in America, Right. what's stopping him from getting on camera and going, oh... A hundred billion Americans were killed today, oh. uh, which is what's giving me executive power what to go and nuke the uh, Middle East. What about the, uh, what was the, I can't think what the hashtag was there for a while, but the, was it the Green Bay Massacre? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Which the, the never, Bowling Green Massacre. Bowling Green Massacre. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which Spicer misquoted um, his last, his last pref press conference. He was talking about the um, Atlanta terrorist attack. Yeah. Never happened. Never happened. And then just releases a one sentence. Oh, I obviously meant Orlando. It's like, you, no, 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 you no, don't no. have the fucking right to get outraged, bro. Yeah. You said the wrong fucking word when yeah. talking about terrorist attacks. Yeah. You redacted and profusely apologized. You don't get shitty going, oh, how could you not psychically intuit what I meant? But you're, you're in positions of power. That's what comes with it. You, you have the responsibility to be correct. I enjoyed Pauline Hanson saying good stuff about Putin and then everyone pointing out that he killed 38 Australians. So that must have really fucking burned her dim sims like she <laughs> <laughs> did she redact or no it's fine <laughs> like what kind of fucking planet are we living on where it's like imagine obama had gone on tv and gone hey hey we're we're, we're all killers we've all done bad things oh yeah you know what i mean there would like any of the things that trump has done if obama did half of that the government was shut down and the republicans would refuse to work with him just these spineless cunts yeah, it's like oh no nah, no nah, it's fine. He actually meant this. It's yeah, unfucking believable. I, I've noticed that. Uh, I think uh, uh, is it maybe Fox are, are doing a hilarious uh, awards show where they're picking out the, the the weakest liberal and all that kind of stuff. Right. And it's like, yeah, y you don't know how comedy works. <laughs> 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 well, there was punching a, there was down. Oh yeah. Oh, look at these black people. Then they don't even get the right to vote properly, and their their lives are considerably worse. Yeah, dude. There, there was this. There was this failed attempt by. Oh, I think it was Fox News. Yeah, to, the, to do a right wing. To do the daily right wing Daily Show, yeah. and it's hosted by Ann Coulter and Rush Limbaugh. It, yeah, it's on YouTube. It is fucking apocalyptic. It's yeah. so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. Be a ratings winner now, but <laughs> of course <laughs> they should bring it back. Oh. But um, yeah, it has affected the the way I watch things. Like uh, uh, all that jazz was great suggestion, by the way, because I'd watched it so young. Yeah. Lots of things that you, weirdly enough, you I, I could relate to. Yeah. Aspects of it now. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. Know that, fuck, Roy Schneider. Like my lord. Like how good is he? That performance is un fucking believable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh. And that he's still got that all American masculinity yes but it's tinged with so much kind of you know femininity not in a not, uh, you know not in a gay sense 
but just in the <laughs> you know in the sense of him being a balanced human being. Oh, he's got that comfort. Yeah, but he's kind of still like a guy. Makes yeah. many guy mistakes or oh, he's fucking like sex on legs on that movie. He's just fucking brilliant. Yeah, so brilliant. And all those um, and the slow de- deterioration of Showtime. Yeah. you know, just <laughs> slowly, you know, and it's uh, such a, it's a. Uh, doesn't outstay its welcome either, which I really enjoyed. I forgot that was Jessica Lang. Yeah, yeah. Was, oh, that's right. It's just an unbl- and you know, like you know that it's basically Bob Fosse's autobiography. Yeah. So what a, just what a ballsy dude to put an avatar of himself on screen like that and be so honest about yeah. what a womanizing piece of shit he is. Yeah. How he's I- incapable of really getting close to anyone. Yeah. You know, all that. of it. Because the musical that um, Rob Schneider, Roy Schneider's... Um, <laughs> Rob Schneider. Schneider. Jesus Christ. All that uh, jizz. That's Rob <laughs> Schneider. <laughs> but his last performance, he reveals his mangina. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the musical that's being made in that is an analog, an analog of um, Chicago. So that's yep. so you know when Fosse was making Chicago, that's when he had that massive heart attack and yep. open heart surgery and everything. So it's just I've never seen a biopic that's just so raw and honest and yeah, man, the heart surgery stuff's confronting yeah. as well. Oh, just that whole last twenty minutes. I don't want to spoil it for anyone yeah. that hasn't seen it, but just where it goes kind yeah. of into weird magical reality land is, yeah. and that final number is one of the most breathtaking things I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just incredible. I read some reviews of it. Uh, you know, when you're curious to know how it sat, and, yeah. and, it, and it was uh, it was Oscar nominated, yeah. and uh, but there were there was there was some naysayers yeah. about the but review, which I can, you know, it's it's interesting when you read a review where you disagree with what they're thinking but you can completely understand yeah, how totally. they think it yeah, yeah yeah was it specifically about the last couple of minutes yeah and, and it was talking you know some people were talking about how a bit on the nose a, a bit on the nose yeah. a bit up itself you know all that kind yeah, of stuff oh. and it's like uh and you know i was reading them and just going yeah <laughs> yeah it <laughs> yeah, is no it is that's but the it's, fucking point but like, that's kind of is, that's know. kind of what you love about it yeah as yeah, well. yeah like the, it's kind of it is all of those things, but you feel like there's never a moment where Fosse through Schneider isn't winking at mm. you going, I know. Yeah. You yeah. know, you feel like he'd win every argument. You know, you're a narcissist. Yep. Uh, look, look at my movie. That's yeah. what I am. You know, you're a <laughs> womanizer. I know. Oh, how terrible is it? Look at it. <laughs> don't, don't you feel like it should get more kudos than it gets, that movie? Yeah. It, like it should be on the list of must-see movies. Well, I kind of wish, um, you know, you look at it and you think, like I, I, I don't know if this is correct, but it feels like you know you've seen La La Land. Yes. Yeah, it feels like the ending of La La Land mm. is maybe being influenced a little bit, you know, because it goes into that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying. Uh, anyway, that's what I kind of. That might be just because I saw La La Land recently and then, you know... But well, I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of really big directors cite all that jazz as, yeah. a, as a really influential film on and, them. And I wish they'd... Um, I wish they'd made La La Land a little bit more... Uh, you know, like I, I would have preferred a movie that was a bit more down to earth. Right. With... with with all those moments. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, with the musical moments. With the musical moments. Right. You know, like, I think that that would have been a little bit more interesting. Because, you know, like, like Schneider wasn't a, um, he wasn't a trained dancer or anything, was he? No. No. No, So, you know, like, there, 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 there could have been something that, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, I loved it. I loved I, it. I, 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 I want to tell you about a movie that I saw. Mm. J- linking back to this thing you were saying about. Oh, uh, sorry. By the way, uh, uh, let us know if you ended up watching all that jazz. Oh, we, and if you haven't, watch it. It's yeah, the best. And write and, and write to us and let us know. Please. Yeah. Um, so this is a movie, d- d- uh, yeah, um, just back to what we were saying about how what's going on in the culture affects what we're watching and consuming at the moment. This, uh, this movie really reminded me of... Not to get too lost in the bleakness and the negativity. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a movie scary movie five. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie called Tower, uh, and it's about the first mass shooting in America. The right. um, uh, a University of Texas Tower. This guy Charles Whitman got on top of the tower. And what year is this? Nineteen sixty or something. Right. Right. Um, and this is and and this 
moment is the thing that's kind of like was referenced in Buffy because there's the oh is it uh, well I I guess there's a guy in a clock tower in yeah it's in it, Buffy yeah it's, yeah. it's I, the first time I ever heard it was in Natural Born Killers um, yeah Tom Sizemore's mum gets killed at the University of Texas right. by Charles Whitman. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think it's one of those seminal moments in American yeah. history, as yeah. toxic as it is. Um, so basically, this guy climbed to the top of the tower. He had a full 360-degree view of Austin from the tower and just started picking people off. Yeah. Um, and because it was coming from so many different angles and, you know, America didn't yet have a history of this kind of thing happening, there was just mass confusion for the first 20 minutes and... You know, a lot of people got taken out before anyone even realized what was happening. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but what I loved about the movie is there is barely a reference to the killer. Right. There's no fetishization of like, what was his mental state? What was going through his head? I right. think we all know he was fucking insane. Right. That was what was going through his head. You yep. know, a lot of... Um, he had issues. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But what it focuses on is the victims, but not victimizing the victims. Right. It focuses on, you know, like there's this one woman who gets, she's the first one that gets shot. She's a pregnant lady. She And her boyfriend gets shot. He dies and she's taken out. And she's basically lying under the midday Texas sun, just baking, writhing around, dying. And no one can get to her because, you know, they don't want to get shot. Right. Uh, and about 20 minutes in, this woman just runs over to her and just lies down next to her just to be with her, just to oh, comfort her. Really? Oh, yeah, my it's, God. Oh, it's incredible. That's too much. It's incredible. Oh, and, she, and, you know, this, this woman that's been shot is saying, like, you need to get out of here. Right. Uh, she's like, no, no, I'm here with you. You know, prime position could get taken out at any moment. You know, and then it tells the stories of other people that would run into the line of fire yeah. to pick up the half-dead people and take them out and, you know, oh. totally risking their lives. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, so, it's so beautiful. And it's all done... Um, with rotoscoping. Yeah, So, right. it's animation um, and all this first-person kind of narration by the people that were actually involved. Right. Um, and it just reminded me, you know, we get so locked into this thing of, you know, oh, the world's so shit, fuck, the, you know, everyone's so evil, humanity's fucked. H humanity's fucking great. The problem with us and our media and the way we kind of catastrophize is we focus in on the one piece of shit out of a million who did something fucking awful. Yeah. And we forget about all of the people that risk their lives to help other people. Yeah. You don't even need to risk your life. If, if I'm, if I, when I leave here, if I fell down in the street, guarantee five or six people are going to come up and go, shit, man, are you okay? And help yeah. me up. You know, and we don't, we, 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 I don't know. I don't know if, the, if it's just because we love to kind of focus in on the bleak and the horror of the world. But to me, it's amazing that there's not shit going down every five seconds. You're right. You know what I mean? Like we, are not, we are not, we were not, we did not evolve as homo sapiens to, to exist in high density populations mm. with thousands and thousands and thousands of people of different nationalities, colors, religions, everything. The fact that it all functions relatively okay and yeah the occasional shitty thing happens but to me it's amazing that it's only the occasional shitty thing right but we're so geared towards you know being such a toxic negative culture i understand the irony of me saying this after you know kind of no, talking about I, how hard it is not to be in that realm yeah well but that's this is part of what you're talking oh, i think about, it's a symptom of the culture we live it. in yeah we, we focus in on all this shit you know and i'm not saying oh you know you should turn on the news and it should be oh Top of the news, a man helped another man today. <laughs> like, yeah. obviously, you know, it's that whole it bleeds, it leads thing. That's not going to, that's not what people want. Yeah. But the reality is, the actual objective reality is in most, I mean, I'll say in most first world kind of societies, it's, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. We're doing okay. Well, that's, I reckon that's part of the frustration. We could be even better. We could we, be, we absolutely. Could, we, we should be, uh, we should be, eradicating diseases we should be populating the stars yeah. we should be just creating a, a you know we should be helping people in third world countries yeah. you know like we have all that capacity but instead the the things that we've created like money mm -hmm. and the world economy which when you think about it is all imaginary bullshit oh, it's not even real Mom. it's it's you know we're so we're so s slavish to these things that we've created 
and it stops us from reaching our full potential. Wh- which were it's like it's like as a, it's like the world collectively always makes excuses. Yeah, you know, I'd like to get fit, but my toes sore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Abs- no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And all these structures, like you know, religions and culture and uh, financial systems and all these things, they are they were necessary and and are still necessary uh imaginary constructs you know we wouldn't have have gotten to where we are as a as a species Mm. without all these things Mm. but you know they're kind of um you know they're increasingly redundant right you know in terms of just where you know us moving forward and evolving past where where we currently are where so much Mm. of what we do is still so motivated by these kind of more animalistic urges yeah you know uh, uh, a territoriality but that's that's why tribalism you know that's where that, that that's the thing i love about sport i feel like sport allows you to tap into those mm. you know you can barrack for your team or you mm. can barrack for your person and you get right behind it and you're devastated when they don't win and you're, mm. you're elated when they do win and you know that's that's where we should be getting that shit out of our system. Yeah, and not in politics, but not unfortunately in politics. politics is becoming more like sports. Well, not, not, e- not in entertainment either. Like, you mm. know, like uh, like so many movies are considered not to be good movies because they don't break the $100 million mark. <laughs> but that, that's it's, it's not a competition for how much money you can make. Sometimes yeah. a movie is amazing and unfortunately doesn't have a broader appeal yeah. than, say fucking Michael Bay's Transformers. Isn't it weird that the average person, when you hear them talk about movies, now they talk about box office receipts. Who gives a fuck? No, I don't think anybody <laughs> talked about I, that I, as a kid. No, no, they never used to. You just talked about the now, movie People like. are like, oh, the, I wonder if the new Star Wars will cross a billion dollars. Who, who gives a fuck? That's the last thing you I care? think about. I know. But you know what? Like, I I would be a liar if I didn't say with with movies that I like and directors that I like and, mm. and movie stars that I like that I don't check to see that the movies are Doing making well. money because I know that while they're making money, they can keep making what they want to make. And as mm. soon as they stop making money, they're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, and that, that's, that's true. And that, But that shits me that I even go and check. Because the real the real thing is the you know is the test of time. It's got you know the the right. uh, all the most of the movies that I love weren't necessarily received well when they were first released. Oh, so and many, then right? you know, a few years later, suddenly everyone catches on and goes, oh, wait a minute, that was fucking great. Oh, yeah, remember um, Blade Runner fucking fizzled totally. at the box office and now yeah. it's one of the all-time greats. Absolutely, and there's so many movies like that. Yeah. Um, like Blade Runner's so good that people don't like it out of spite because too many people have told them that it's really good, but they don't realise before that nobody was saying it was good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. those people who dislike it are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I fluctuate. Every time I... I love it every time I see it, and then I'll see it again and hate it, and then I'll see oh, it really? again and I love it. And nah, it just I'm all flip, over flip, it. Flip, 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 flip. I, I rewatched uh, one of the director's cuts. I don't know which one it is. I think the original director's cut. Mm. And uh, but you know what? Like I've got to be honest. I really like the one with the narration as well. Oh, yeah, I've never seen it. I, I love the one with the narration, and I was like, oh, yeah, but Harrison Ford sounds like he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, it kind of suits his character, <laughs> and it's got some. Uh, <laughs> It's got some cracking lines in it, and it's got a tacked-on happy ending that, I don't know, it makes sense enough for me. Like, you know what, I think I prefer that version than the downbeat ending <laughs> one. Which is the, what's the downbeat one? Where they just well, that's, that's most of them. That's sneak most off, of the they sneak off together, and you don't well, really the, the know Well, the downbeat ending happen. is the implication that he's a replicant. Right, 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 yeah, right. But right. The, the first one, well, I didn't think he was a, re- a replicant at all. Yeah, I, 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 even in the ones where they suggest that he is a replicant, I don't buy that he's a replicant. Nah, I don't want to. You don't I'm want not him? into it. Well, isn't isn't the new one going to reveal that he is? Ah, uh, well, you know, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Though I like. Don't Dennis change Phil- my dream. No, but I really like Dennis Villeneuve. <laughs> he's fucking great. <laughs> he's such huh? a great act, uh, director, and uh, you know, uh, I've noticed there's a bit of Gosling hate of late, but I'll, I'll stick by Gosling. I like Gosling. Gosling's fantastic. No, I've heard a bit of I've heard a bit of Gosling hate amongst because of La La Land. Yeah. Uh, yeah, amongst amongst the cool kids, oh, I've noticed. Fuck off. Who's, but someone said he's... So, but someone was saying they didn't like him, and uh, they said he's got a weak mouth. And I went, oh, yeah, no, my mum says that as well. Yeah, that's fair enough, but uh, <laughs> that's not a reason to dislike someone. Anyone that can teach themselves jazz piano in three months for uh, a Come movie on. is pretty fucking great. He's not taking himself too seriously. Just relax. Like, the, yeah. some of the stuff that he was pulling off in La La Land was amazing. Yeah, he was great. Amazing. Yeah. 
But um, but yeah, sometimes I watch. You know, when uh, the original end of Blade Runner, where they find the unicorn, I just thought the implication was that Rachel was different, and yeah, so right. therefore she might live longer. And she was she was unique. You know, she was she's a, a rare unicorn, something that you would never. Oh, uh, hope right, to see. Right, right. So that was what I always took that to mean. Not to get super nerdy, but I never bought the. Oh, like, how dare you yeah, on this know, podcast? Know, fuck. Get, um, get super nerdy, my friend. <laughs> I always, I never bought that he was a replicant because you never see that orange sheen in his eyeballs. Oh, well, they that you see in every other replicant size. Think I think they've added that to one of the earlier scenes. But you know what? I just don't think, I just don't think it works as a story arc. Like I think it's more interesting a guy who has disconnected from the world has seen too much is brought back into this world and through everything that happens reconnects now even if he reconnects with this hot replicant like at least he's at least he's found his humanity yeah again. he's back in the world you yeah, know yeah, so it's yeah. taken these created creatures to make him feel something again and i think that's a much more interesting story arc than he he's a replicant that doesn't know yeah, 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 yeah. And unless there's that, that somehow feeds into the wider narrative, I don't see the point. I yeah. must watch it again. The last time I saw it was at the Orpheum. They're doing a screening of it uh, next they? month, if you're interested, uh, on the big screen. Uh, oh, but I had check the dates. I had a um, uh, two people sitting behind me, a father and a daughter. And w- normally I'd be like, yeah, man, you're a fucking legend bringing your kid to this. Because the kid How was oh, maybe 12. Oh, yeah. You know, good on you, exposing them to good stuff. Yeah. You know, every time I've seen 2001 at the um, Orpheum, there's always a bunch of kids there that have been brought by their parents. Yeah. Um, but I was just in, I was in a toxic mood, and so I couldn't handle the, is he a robot? Is that guy a robot? And, oh. and you know, the dad doing the, the commentary the whole way through of like, oh, oh this, this scene coming up is seminal. A seminal scene. Oh, like, no, you were sitting behind up. David Stratton with his granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay for the annoying child commentary track. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I watched last night? Yeah. I don't know if you happen to see it or have heard about it, is the pilot for Legion. I've heard Legion's great. I haven't seen it, it though. It was excellent. It's yeah. by uh, Noah Hawley, who's done the created the first two seasons of Fargo. Oh, great! Which are like that first season was excellent. Will said to me, "Wait till you see the second, and he was completely correct. It fucking ticked every box yeah, in my great. face. Okay. Uh, but the Legion, like my complaint with uh, superhero stories in in recent years, is that they are just so formulaic. Yeah. Like they 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 apply the same formula mm. over and over again. And I know people, um, you know, we were, before we started recording, talked about, you know, the, the, the disappointment people feel with The Dark Knight Rises. But personally, I would have been more disappointed if it was another gangster film. I, I, I like that it's, a, it's you know, the, the three yeah, right. Nolan Batman films are very different in, you know, they tell one coherent story, but they are different styles. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Legion, oh man, it completely uh approaches it from a very different angle he's uh because you, you i don't know the character i'm not really that over like controlled schizophrenia or something he's got well, he's a telepath and he, i think he kind of i get the impression he absorbs people that he's around like right. kind of absorbs them and the, the lead actor who i can't think of his name was excellent uh and it was the uh, have you seen season two of fargo I haven't seen any Fargo. Oh man, get on to Fargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so w- one of the girls from Fargo. Anyway, it just it moved along at a cracking pace. Mm. I reckon it's actually I reckon it's better probably not to know too much about it. Uh, I thought all the characters were interesting, and and it got to the end, and it was like a I think it was like an hour and twenty minute pilot kind of thing, and I got to the end and went, wow, that went really quickly. I will get on board because I'm different. I'm, I am definitely interested in the different approach. As much as you know, everyone crowed about Deadpool. I enjoyed it while I was, it was watching. It was okay, it. but it was exactly the same as every other superhero movie, except it had more poo poo and wee wee jokes in it. And he said fuck a few times. Oh, it, it, it followed the same it did, structure of every other superhero movie. Yeah, or well, at least it kind of. Well, at least it kind of told the story in a non-linear way. Though I kind of enjoyed, yeah, yeah. enjoyed that, and it did have what I thought was the most romantic scene in uh, 2016, where he when the the, the sex montage where oh, when he gets pegged. Where he gets pegged. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, they are equals. They are complete equals. 
<laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't bad. I got thrown. I was. I was feeling particularly anxious that day, and so when he was in hospital getting his um, cancer diagnosis, oh. that sparked me into some awful yeah. hypochondroidal debt tailspin. Yeah, like, oh yeah. God, fuck! It's the universe telling me that I've got cancer. <laughs> you fucking narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> Only I could have a mental breakdown watching Deadpool. Uh, yeah, everyone so else is hooping and stupid. laughing. Ugh. I would love to have gotten uh, if someone had taken a photo of the audience and bears people cheering. <laughs> <laughs> there's you cringing with your hat down. <gasps> um, but yeah, you, there was a big push for that to be nominated for Best Movie. And oh, I thought, come on. what are you talking about? People are fucking, like, you know, it was fun. It was fun. But it was, I, I tell you what, I cannot fucking believe that Hacksaw Ridge is nominated for Best Picture. Like, I know Hollywood loves a comeback story and oh, it's like yeah. suits the narrative that all yeah. Bill Gibson's, you know, finally off the hook for being a fucking... He doesn't hate the Jews anymore. ...wife-beating anti-Semite. Yeah. Um, oh, you are only concentrating on the negative, though. No, that's true. I know. He, he hates Japanese people, too. Um, <laughs> that fucking movie is uh, appalling. Appallingly bad. And I, I, I had just, no urge to see it. So You haven't seen it? No, and I'm, I have no urge have to see it. Have we talked about this before? Oh, I can't really remember. I've had a lot of surgery since then. Oh, right. I, one thing I will say, and apologies if I have said this before, but it, to me it's so gross that a movie that's about the world's greatest pacifist mm. is a movie that revels in and glorifies the most horrific violence I've ever seen. Like, it's one right. thing to depict violence in a warm... Like, you know, the... The classic example of the the Saving Private Ryan opening yep. scene. One of the most violent things yep. I've ever seen on film. Yep. And there's no part of you at the end of that sequence that's like, Woo! Yeah, sign yeah! me up. Let's do no, this. No, it's literally like, oh my fuck. Like, I, that is know, horrific, yeah. Horrific. And especially, uh, you know, when I saw it at the cinema, God, I was what? Eight, 17, 18. Right. And we went in thinking, you know, because people were like, this is the most violent thing ever. And of course, we were teenage boys going like, this will be fucking sick. Yeah. It'll probably be so violent it becomes cool. Yeah. And by the end, we were all just like, you know, pale and shaking. <laughs> like, right. Like, uh, yeah. um, uh, that has my favourite. Uh, like, I know Tom Hanks has, you know, danced in big and he's done lots of, you know, really excellent things in movies. But that's got my favourite uh, Tom Hanks moment where he is... Right towards the end, you know, when he is fucked up yeah. and he's sitting there and he just sees the tank coming at him and he just pulls out his gun because yeah. that's all he's got left. And then boom, and you just go, and even he's like, what just happened? Looking at the then gun. The play, <laughs> it's great. It's yeah, such yeah, a, yeah. That to me is my favourite Tom Hanks moment. It's a great. He's yeah. so great in that. But it's it, it, So, like, you've got that kind of war sequence that is absurdly violent. Yeah. But at no point are you, you know thinking it's not stylized it's not sexy yeah and all the violence in Hacksaw Ridge is like either comically absurd you know in terms of like a zombie movie absurd like there's one scene where a guy picks up a torso with its intestines hanging out and uses it as a Captain America shield as he charges through the battlefield with a machine gun in the other end, like, ah! Like, carrying this body that's being riddled with bullets and guts are flying everywhere. And I went and saw it with um, a couple of comics, and we were howling with laughter. Right. Like, it was just like, come on, dude, this is... You're trying to create a realistic depiction of war. That is physically impossible, carry a fucking torso to like, <laughs> like, like is it is it the full torso or is it half a torso like is it like it, it, the guy's like uh, from his belly down is gone oh so he's carrying like the the arms the body and, and the, the head, head. What? like like and he's got one and he's holding it from like with scrunched up material from behind oh, yeah. in front of him like a Captain That's America strongest shield. Man the uh, strongest man in the world. Yeah, one the other hand like a giant machine gun. Oh man. And uh, just these close-ups of like Japanese faces that look like they were drawn by a racist caricaturist from World War Two. Like, right. Oh, looks so fucking racist. Well, you know, like, you know when you're 50-50 on a movie and then you see something and you just go, nah, not going to see that. Oh, dude. You know, you, know the, you know the scene for me in the trailer that made me go, nah, right. was when he does his Pele soccer kick <laughs> with the grenade. I went, fuck this. <laughs> Kicks the grenade fuck away. Fuck this. But all the violence is like that. Right. You know, it's all violence that if I was 15, I would have been like, yeah. Yeah. Woo! Like, yeah, get them. But right. It's just that there's no part of it that's like it's horrific. Yeah. But it's stylized, sexy, horrific. You know, yeah. slow motion, fucking 
the gun firing and the bullet flying out like in a Tarantino movie. It's like, how is this? This is about a pacifist. Why are you fetishizing the vi- I think Mel Gibson is mentally ill. I think he's oh, yeah. a genuinely I- disturbed human being. Yeah, well, you can see it in his face. Like, you know, when yeah. even when he's fine, he's all twitchy and nervy. And well, of course. Can you imagine yeah. walking into a room and knowing that every single person in that room is thinking, oh, God, it's fucking the crazy Mel Gibson. Kills me as well. I loved him in Gallipoli. Like, he was one of my <laughs> first favourite actors, <laughs> you know? And now it's just like, what have you done? You know what we should do? We should... Have you ever seen Escape to Victory? No. Have we talked about this? No. Escape to Victory is one of the all-time great movies, and what I mean by that is it bombed <laughs> everywhere, but I reckon it ran for three months in Adelaide because the Italian and Greek community went, this is amazing. <laughs> and it is Sylvester Stallone, Michael Caine, prisoner of war movie like The Great Escape, except it revolves around a game of soccer. And it is, <laughs> and, and Pele is one of that. This is what reminded me. Pele is one of the uh, POWs, <laughs> and the Russians decide to set up a propaganda game where it's the German national team against these POWs set in Paris. And uh, Sylvester Stallone's the goalie. And you know what we should do? We should find out where we can put it on and have people come and watch it with us because it is amazing. <laughs> and I never want you to see it until you're sitting alongside me for the first time so we can talk all the way through it. <laughs> yeah, great. It's great. And it, it did. It, died. it was called, I think it was called Victory in the rest of the world, but in Australia for some reason it's called Escape to Victory, and um, which I think is actually a better title. And it, I remember <laughs> just running for months and all the Italians and Greeks that I went to primary school with, you know... <laughs> We would go and like we'd all <laughs> woo. People just cheering. Sly, he's a goalie now. He was the best boxer in the world, and now he's a goalie. It's great. It's escape terrible. To victory. Yeah, escape to victory. Yeah, great. We should do that. Yeah. By the way, uh, I know you've got some way to go. We still didn't get to your story, so oh, I'll, t- I'll tell you real quick. Oh uh, yeah, you? but is it a good story that you? All right, we'll put it off. We'll put it Are off. you sure? Yeah, we'll put yeah. it off. It's fine. It's fine. All right. How's Fuck Club going? Yeah, good. It's good. Uh, we're getting good crowds, smart crowds that are very kind of tuned into what what we're trying to do. Great. Um, yeah, just fucking. I, I forgot how stressful it is putting on a weekly show. Oh man. We well, just how quickly time moves as well, and all of a sudden it's yes. like ah shit, it's f- it's show time. Yeah. Um. So no, it's 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 going really well. It's yeah. Going really well. Man, it's uh, I would never go back to running a weekly room. I, I've yeah. done it, <laughs> and it's, you know, it, but you know what it is? It's not the hardest thing in the world. You just have to stay on it. Yeah, that's the thing, and it's not yeah. just the night. It's, you know, the preceding days of yeah. organising lineups, and, you know, and I'm, I suck at social, I hate social media, so, you yeah. know, having to put fucking posts up, and, you know, I always feel like i got to apologise as I'm putting a post on no, I'm sorry to hustle everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, just, you know, just put up one or two things that are interesting beforehand and then put up what you're promoting. That's what I always yeah, do. Yeah, oh, yeah. look, here's, a, here's a, a baby rhinoceros and a kitten being friends. <laughs> oh, here's, here's me having a crack at some right-wing pundit. By the way, I have shows coming up at the Adelaide <laughs> Fringe, uh, Melbourne Comedy Festival, Sydney Comedy Festival. You can find out those details at Justin Hamilton Official Facebook page. You know what? That was actually a go, real you did plug. It. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where can people find out about Fuck Club? Uh, come to the Chippo Hotel Sunday nights. We start around seven fifteen. Around. Uh, what does that but come mean? come a bit early because um, yeah, there, there's been like 70, 80 people a week. Oh great! Yeah, it's great. been like really full. That's really um, helping. So come along. It is a barrel of laughs. It's very different every time. That's for sure. Yeah, great, yeah, yeah. great. And uh, next time, you know what? The next time we we'll just open with the story. We open with the story because that way there's a, a distinct possibility we'll get to it. <laughs>